Wonderful. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to meet you. Again, it's Wednesday afternoon, it's Marcus time, and I'm really grateful and appreciate it a lot that you spend your lifetime this afternoon um, with you. So today we want to talk about how to read forex charts, how you can see here. And with the following topics, what is forex basically? how to read a quote, what is a pip, and forex charts explained. I try to do my best to explain it the way you're going to understand it, and different types of forex charts. I hope you will make sure that you stay until the end of this webinar or this YouTube video, if you watch it on YouTube later, because I will be showing you why you have to learn to crawl before you can walk. We should talk about that. So my name is Marcus Gabel. I'm a trader, coach, speaker, mentor, and I love to teach people and to share all my knowledge with uh, people they are willing to invest in their own education. And uh, actually, I've had more than 20 years experience. I have my own trading mentor service. You can see the hard <coughs> trading. Um, and um, I hope um, you're doing good. And I'm a trader at the Asset Management uh, born Stahlbeck and partner. And if you want to see more about me, then you can visit my homepage, tradingandpersonality.com. Here you can see it. There you will find more information about me. So I'm partnering with Admiral, with Admiral Markets, which is a forest broker uh, and a CFD broker that offers trading over 8,000 different financial instruments through one of the world's best trading platforms, um, MetaTrader 5 and 4, of course. And finally, if you watch this video later on YouTube, remember to like this video, share with other traders and subscribe so you will never miss an episode. Okay, this was the official introduction to this video. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing good. And wherever you are, I appreciate it a lot that you spent your time with me and your attention. And I say hello, hello, hello around the world, wherever you are. Um, my life is really good because I'm happy. And uh, the reason is why I'm happy, because I can make you happy with sharing my knowledge, my knowledge with you. And what is better than making people happy? This uh, is like planting a seed in your mind and they will rip it up and you will see how you can be happy by yourself. But first of all, you have to plant the seed to make other people's happy. And this is what I'm doing to share my knowledge, to help people to become sex successful in trading. And I guess today we have a great chance to, uh, to dive deep into uh, deeper knowledge. And uh, the topic, what is Forex? Let's start with the first slide. And ladies and gentlemen, the chat is open here on the right side. Please type in what is in your heart, what drives you crazy, what drives you crazy, what's crossing your mind actually. Um, everything, what is a part of your life, type it in and um, then you can, we can talk about everything. So my lovely and wonderful host behind Roman, thanks a lot for opening this webinar and for supporting me. You can see in the chat, you can subscribe our Admiral Markets Telegram. It's uh, Admiral Markets Global. And if you have any questions there, type it in. We can talk about it and it's on my screen and uh, everybody is here to help you. And maybe I can tell you a little bit secret. We have wonderful news for next year for you. Believe me, it's gonna be amazing, amazing. So you can really be excited about that, what we prepared for you to next for 2021 to make you really successful wherever you are. Okay, let's talk about Forex, my preferred own market I trade. And uh, Forex is short for foreign exchange. So I'm really good. Thank you very much. I hope you're doing good as well. So Forex exchange is the game of buying and selling various, various currencies in the foreign exchange market. So maybe you know me a little bit longer right now. And you know, I love to dive deeper into all these slides. And I try to explain you in a way that you can understand it really easily. So 
you see, and what I want to uh, lead your attention on is buying and selling. That's the two uh, most important words, buying and selling. Keep in your mind, please, because we need it in the next slides as well. Maybe take a pen and a paper and write it down, buying and selling, or type it in your phone, mobile phone, whatever, focus on it. In the global foreign the exchange market, retailers like you and me, that's private traders with smaller accounts. And maybe you have a question, what is a small account? Okay, um, here on my right side, there is a separate, separate uh, uh, computer because this is my, you know, I'm working for an asset management and I used to trade uh, a little bit bigger accounts. So what is, a, what is a retail or a small account? Everything, everything lower than 50,000 K, uh, 50,000 euros or dollars is a small account. Maybe a... 100,000 is a small account in the Forex mark. Why? Look the last line. We traded around $5.3 trillion a day. That's, that's awesome. $5.3 trillion a day. So you cannot influence the market, of course not. So if you have a $100,000, $200,000 account, it's in comparison to the forex market it's nothing so what does it mean yeah we can make money we are flying under the radar and everything is fine so uh, so retailers so like you and me then we as invest investors what is an investor maybe you know the name um warren buffett george soros so uh bill druckenmiller so that's investors then we have speculators and speculators, all of us, we are speculating. Uh, don't mix it with gambling. Gambling is not speculating. So take a, paper, take a note right now, what I tell you right now. Speculation. There is a base with this. Uh, um, um, there's a root word and it's based on the Latinum word speculare. So that's the, the root word of speculation. That's the Latinum word, speculare. So what's the proper or what is literally uh, um, translation for speculare? Speculare literally means watching, observing, looking around. That's not gambling. Gambling means you can you don't have a clue what you have to do. Speculation means three W's. W W W. What does it mean? Wait, wait, wait. Wait for your signal. Wait for the uh, for the entry, and then wait for the result. Wait, wait, wait. So this is speculare. This means observing, means waiting. It's not action. Speculare means waiting. Be calm. Then watching around, have a look at the big picture. So this is speculare, observing. Doesn't mean gambling. Stop gambling. Gambling will never lead you to success. So this is, you know, deep knowledge. So um, speculators, so we all of us, we are speculating because no one can predict the future. Of course not. We are on the right side of the chart. You know, no one knows what's happened next. And we as institutions like uh, banks or, or uh, hedge funds or maybe governments, um, central banks. So in this case, that's institutions. So uh, in this, all these traders determine the relative value for the conversion of one currency to another, why the buying or selling of uh, why are the buying and selling of currency pairs? Again, you see, buying and selling. You cannot see anything I typed in in this slide. I know what will happen. Oh, my name is in the book map. Oh, I have a special reason why I go into the market. No, nothing is there. 
We only want, like, we only talk about um, buying and selling. The Forex market is a really dynamic, liquid marketplace with daily turnover predicted, as I said, as I mentioned, $5.3 trillion. Come on, can you imagine $1 trillion? By the way, by one day. So we're talking about around, one, around $21 trillion a week. So... And we have the honor, we have the honor to play with in this market. But what do you think? So-called institution traders, banks, they are all, are they, all of them, they are involved in this market. So how many, how often is there Euro US dollar in the market? How often? You will say, one time. Yes, that's true. Euro dollar exists one time. There's only one book map. It's over the counter, yes, but it's only one existing Euro USD. So the guy who is working for a bank or for a hedge fund or for a family office, and believe me, they have a little bit more money on their account than you and me, they work in the same market like you. It's interesting, right? So I don't know where are you placed right now. Maybe in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in London, or in UK, or wherever. There's only one Euro USD. And you, what, is, what do you think what is better? To work and to run with the elephants or against? So type in the chat box. What do you think what is more healthy for your account? To work with the elephants or to work against? What do you think? So type it in, with or against, just only one word. What do you think? What is more healthy for your account and for yourself? Yeah, of course, you're right. Of course, with the elephants. And the point is, we can read the steps of the elephants. That's really cool. And we are the mouses. We are the mouses on the elephants. So believe me, it's more healthy for yourself and for your account to work with the elephants. So we have to read the charts and then you can work with the elephants. And in, what do you think? Who has more education? One, of the one guy of the bank or an office or family office, a hedge fund, or you and me as a private trader. What do you think? Who has more education? This guy's with the big elephants or we? What do you think? Who has more education? Who has more experience? What do you think? The big guys or you and me? The nice, the elephants have all. Yes, they have the money, of course. And they have the education. So I have the great, I have the great honor to work with those guys. Tomorrow, for example, I have to drive to Frankfurt. You know Frankfurt? The city town, the bank, money town of Germany. So there is a special office. I have a special office there because I work for a trading uh, for asset management. And um, believe me, I work with those guys. And I know they have three years education at least, then another three years to grow up experience. And then they can have a huge account. Do you think they know what they are doing? And who are we right now? Who are we? May I, I guess you understand right now there's only one Euro USD. There is only one Forex market. There is not a kindergarten for Forex market. There is not a ground school. There is not a high school. There is not a, a university. You can go from the kindergarten to university. There isn't such things. There is only one market. And all guys are working in the same market. So as you figured out, it's more healthy to work with the elephants. So now the next question, do you have the same education like those guys? 
how can you dare to think you can make money without education? Yes, I'm really happy that you spend your time with this with our webinars from Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight with Paul Jens and myself. We give you education. But do you really think this is enough? This is an this is education on the on the on the shallow, on the surface. But if you want to trade properly, and if you want to make this a similar mar a similar money like the huge guys, you have to dive in deeper. You have to you have to get an education, deeper education. But this is uh, that's the first step to watch our webinars. That's the first step. So think it through for yourself, for yourself uh, at, at home. So let's go deeper. So how to read a currency quote. So Forex is a business. Oh, next. So we have two words, buyers and sellers. That's the next word, which is really important, business. So we figured out already it's not gambling. Speculation, speculare, observing, watching, looking around, wait, wait, wait. So not gambling, speculation. So business, it's not a game. That's a big business. And every business you have to learn for a special time. And this is a business of conversion. And since you're always comparing the value of one currency to another, Forex is always quoted in pairs. You cannot buy only one euro. There's other than one pair on the other side. So the quote of Euro USD shows, shows you how many US dollar you will get for one euro. So the first currency, in this case, you can see in the, in the, see in the slide, is Euro. And it's called the base of this currency. And US dollar is called the quote. So always the first name is always the base. If you want to try Aussie Japanese yen, then Aussie dollar is the base and quote is Japanese yen. So if you want to buy dollar, uh, if you want to buy euro, then it means in the same, in the same stage, it means you sell dollar. So you cannot buy a euro without selling dollar. It's not possible. Yeah, so you see, three words. Type it, make a note. Buyers, sellers, not reason, not why, not a name, not the trend line, not an indicator, nothing else like that. Just only buying and selling, no more. So and it's a business. And every business you, has to, you have to learn, of course. So please type it down in your notes. The first currency is called the base and the second is called the quotes. So if you buy euro, then you will sell dollar. If you want to buy dollar, then you have to sell Japanese yen, for example. That if you want to buy Japanese yen, that means you have to sell dollar. So let's go. The most popular piece of terminology used by Forex traders has to go to be humble pip. What does it mean? Do you know what does it mean pip? Type in the chat box. Do you know what does it mean pip? What does, what's, the, what's the right word for pip? Fourth decimal point. Unfortunately, no. Percentage in point. Unfortunately, no. It's wrong. Sorry. You know, take it. No, don't take it personally. Of course not. It's not right. The last decimal point. No. What is the real meaning, the literally meaning of PIP? So guys, less decimal point when it's moved. No, it's not. What is the literally wording wording of PIP? Point in percentage, unfortunately, no. So you'll see guys, this is the first proof. You trade in Forex, but you don't know what is PIP. The real meaning, the wording of PIP. 
PIP is the real meaning of price interest point, not percentage interest point. Price interest point. Type it down. Take a pen. Type it down. This is really interesting. Price interest point. So next, the fourth word we have to know, we have to remind is price. Now you see, no reason, no trend line, no indicator, just a price. So this PIP, price interest point, is simply a unit you count profit or loss in. Typically, Forex pairs are quoted for four decimal places. So you see it here on the slide, 0.0001 was right. 0.0001. Yes, zero, 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 one. So the fourth, uh, the fourth number, the fourth uh, number after the point is one pip. So the one four spaces after the zero is what is referred to as a pip. So what does it mean, a pip? Can you repeat it, please? Come, on, let's make a little bit of game. Come on. What is PIP? Type in the chat box. What is PIP? Do you remember? What is PIP? Type it in. Yes, Eva. I'm so proud of you. Really. I love our girls. They're watching us. Yes, Mark. Of course. Right. Price, interest, point. Wonderful. Really. So I will never forget it. I swear to God, you will never forget it. Price, interest, point. Wonderful. Okay, so you see, we have, a, we have an example here. This is also US dollar, 0 0.7607. The last number is one pip, price interest point. Okay, let's take an example. If a trader buys GBP, which is a great Britain pounds, of course, British pound or pound sterling, they say, uh, Pipettes is the fifth. Some, in Euro for USD, for example, we have five numbers after the O, uh, after the point, and this is a pipette, just a little bit closer, but we, we count in pip. For example, if a trader buys British pounds against US dollar, so can you repeat it? How is the name for the first, uh, for the first currency? You know? Again, this is the our second one. Exactly. This is the base currency. And the second one is, type it in. First one was base. Second one is, yeah, yeah, wonderful. I love you guys. I really love you. Quote, exactly. I swear you will never forget it. Base and quote. You can, it's really easy. It's really, really easy. And what does it mean to pip? Price interest point. I hope you learned somebody. I hope you learned something with me today. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, if you if you buy GBP against your sort of a 160, uh, so 1.6000, and then later on sell it for 16020, that's a difference of one uh, of O of 0 0.0020. Always say 20 pips. And if you were long, you made money for 20 pips. If you were short, then you lose 20, 20 pips. And there's one exception of this calculation. And this is all what you see in yen pairs. For example, USD, Japanese yen, cause which is only quoted in two decimal places. In this case, the second spot after the O is referred to as a pip. So for example, you have Japanese yen 120.15. Then the number five is one pip. In all the other pairs, we have four quotes. So now that you're up to speed, let's move on to what you really came for, how to read a Forex chart. Can you give me just a quick hint? Is it, is it interesting for you to see it from that way? Maybe it's not really new for you, but do you think it's, it's interesting what I'm talking about? Can you give me just a quick information? 
Thanks, guys. Thanks. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. So what is a Forex chart? So you can see this is one of my own slides. Um, a Forex chart is simply a graphical de uh, de uh, de depiction of the exchange rate between two currencies. So do you, do you really know why we need that? Where does everything start and begins? Where does everything start and begin? You know, I asked you last week, do you know about something? Yes, of course, Roland, I know, I knew it, that you know it. I'm really proud of you. The order book, everything starts and begins uh, and ends in the order book, even in Forex charts. Okay, we don't have an official order book. It's over the counter, but that exists an, uh, an order book. Everything starts and, be, and ends there. What do you can see in the book map? So maybe I can, let me show you quick, very quickly this one. So this is, you see, this is a book map, the right side. You can see this is a book map on the right side. So do you see a picture there? So put it down, then you can see nothing. Okay, what can you see there? Can you see anything there? Only numbers. You see buyers, sellers, and the price. There are four elephants. Yes, of course. I, I see a little bit more elephants, I guess. <laughs> so you can identify price movements. Can you identify price movements in the order book? Oh, you cannot, un unless you can see, uh, you can read really quickly, then maybe. So there is no picture in, no trend line, nothing else like that. Because the point is, therefore, because human beings, human beings are used to think in pictures. As I asked you last week, Think about a pink elephant. Oh my God, yes, I have a pink elephant in my mind. Of course, even a pink elephant doesn't exist unless you, ex you paint it on in pink color, then it, it exists, the pink elephant. So human beings, we used to think in pictures, even in trading, of course. Our bodies, it's a, just only a graphical, depiction of an exchange rate between these two currencies. It shows how the exchange rate of current spear has changed over a specific time. For example, the chart about, uh, uh, the ch this chart, I don't know what this is. However, whatever. It shows us the exchange rate between Euro and US dollar. For example, I will show you later in the chart. Um, and how they fluctuate over a special time. But you see, it's just only the price. The price is fluctuating between different price areas. This is what you can see in the chart. This is only the, the visible and uh, the visible heritage, what is happening in the book map. Because in the book map, you only can see numbers. Buyers, sellers, the amount and the price. But that you can imagine what happened there, we use the graphical pictures. Therefore, we use a chart. It doesn't uh, depend from Forex. It's the same in futures, commodities, metals, shares, stocks, whatever, indices, whatever. We use because we human beings think in pictures. Therefore, we, it's easier to work in the charts than with numbers in the book map. Forex charts can be plotted for variety of currency pairs from major pairs like Euro USD, British Pound USD, and minor pairs such as Aussie Canadian dollar or New Zealand Japanese yen. Maybe you heard it the first time. We divide between major pairs, minor pairs, and what's the, th the three, what is the third? Uh, what is the third, how should I say, group of currency pairs? We have three. First one is major, second one is minor, 
And what is the third one? Do you know that? What is the third one? Oh, Ronald, I know you're an expert. Maybe we should change the places. I can listen to you. Of course, you're right. Exotic pairs. What is an exotic pair? For example, Euro, Turkish Lira, such things. Or maybe dollar, um, South African rent. That's an exotic pair. Or maybe US dollar, Mexican peso. This is, or maybe US dollar COP. I guess this is Colombian. Colombia peso? I guess, Claudia, right? You're from Colombia, right? I remember. I guess I remember. Um, yes, ah, got it. <laughs> so, okay. So I don't have problems with uh, reminding free to woman. <laughs> of course. So, Okay, so we divide it between majors, minors, and exotic pairs. Why we have to divide it? It's about the volume beyond. We have huge more traded volume in the major pairs. We have a little bit less volume in the minor pairs, and we have really less volume in the exotic pairs. Yes, right, there's liquidity behind that. So now you can imagine it makes no sense to make day trading in US dollar, uh, Mexican peso, for example. So if you ask me what I'm doing uh, and why spread, of course, yes. But of course the spread is, uh, is responsible about the liquidity, you know? And if you, you need buyers and sellers, and the more often you have a price, uh, the more liquidity you have. Okay, so for my example, uh, I work in uh, an hourly chart and four hourly chart in the major, in the majors and the minors. But in the exotic, I work with weekly chart with special, uh, with special setups, for example. But what you choose, the choice is yours. But please remind always, uh, don't trade day trading for in the exotic pairs. Be attent attention, uh, have attention about the liquidity. So how do work for extra time frame works? The amount of time shown on the chart uh, depends on a particular time frame you select. So maybe you choose one hourly chart, for example. What, what this means is that each point on the graph, whether it be a line, a candle or bar, represents the trading data for one hour. So if you were to change the time frame to five minute chart, each point on the chart would, know, would now represent five minutes worth of trading data. Let me show you this, because uh, this is there's a special interesting point beyond of it. Um, here we go. So for example, let's uh, do it here. So as you can see, this is four hourly chart. What does it mean four hourly chart? Again, everything starts and ends in the book map. And look at this book map. Is there a time frame? Can you see on the right side here of my picture, can you see there a specific time frame? Say yes or no in the chat box. Yes or no? Can you see a time frame there? Right side of, the, uh, of my chart here. Can you see a time frame there? Yes or no? Can you see a time frame there? Right? Of course, it's impossible. No, not one minute. There is no one. There's the three columns. Buyers, Price sellers. There is no time frame in it. So why do we work with time frames? And why do you think your chosen time frame is the best one? Why? In the book where it doesn't exist a time frame. So what does it mean if you work with the time frame? But I haven't book map. It is possible to have one of this. Um, you don't need it. It's just the knowledge of it. You cannot read the book map, of course not. It's just the knowledge what happens there. So we have to dive in, you know. Of course, 
it's human perception, physically spoken, physically spoken, there doesn't exist time. Oh, that's revolutionary, right? You think it exists time? No, it doesn't. I can explain. How does it feel? How does the time feel? If you sit on the chair of a dentist and he work on your teeth, how long do you feel five minutes? Type it in the chat box. How long or five minutes if you sit on a dentist's chair in his working on your, how do you feel five minutes? Yes, of course, <laughs> really, really long time. Really, really long time, indeed, absolutely. So, it's eternity, of course. And now the other one. If you have a really, really lovely weekend, and maybe you have really, really precious time with your lovely woman or girlfriend, and the weekend, what do you say after this weekend? How did you feel it? How it feels, such a lovely work uh, weekend, three days. What do you say at the end of this weekend? Or maybe after your vacation? Like one minute. How often did you say, or oh, maybe quickly pass, oh my God, it's over again, three days. So you feel it's like five minutes. If you have a really precious and lovely time, very, very short, but the five minutes on the dentist's chair is feel like eternity, like hours and hours is back on your teeth. So you see, time doesn't exist. We think it exists because you can measure it on your watch or in your phone, but maybe go thousands of years ago, it doesn't exist a watch. And people used to say, okay, let's meet in the next, uh, when the next uh, moon is full, then we will meet each other. No one, will, no one cares about if you, if you came to this space, to this, uh, to this spot one or two days later. No one cares, no one cares. But today, if you came five minutes too late, everybody's crazy. So you see, only the sun, yes. Let's meet at noon. Okay, when is noon? Yes, when the sun is over. It's again here, up to me. No time. So you see, time doesn't exist. And it's the same in the other book. Time doesn't exist there. We start in Forex, of course, in Australia, 11 uh, uh, p.m. in the night. And we end in Europe or in, uh, in America at 12 Friday p.m. evening. That's the start and the end. Forex market. Forex is 24-5, of course. Or if you take DAX future, we start 8 and we end 20, uh, 10 p.m. That's end and over, but no time frame. So why we use time frames? You see the sense of time frame, what you can see here in uh, here again, so everything what happens in the book map during maybe one hour, or maybe in this case, four hours, is pressed in one candle. So everything what happens in this specific time is pressed in one candle. So what happens in four hours in the book map is pressed in in a candle of four hours. That's all. That's really all. So if you have in four hours, maybe more sellers than buyers, and the volume is higher on the seller side than the buyer side, you have to get a red candle. Why is it? You have a higher opening and a lower closing, which means the price falls down in this four hour candle. This is not a prediction of the next four hours. Of course not. But now we can switch to five minutes. For example, it is exactly the same. 
everything what happens during five minutes in the book map is pressed in a candle of five minutes. So maybe you can imagine right now that doesn't exist a so-called best time frame. Maybe you can, uh, maybe in MetaTrader 5, I guess, you can choose seven minutes candles or maybe three minutes candles. Who cares? It's your choice. It's absolutely your choice. So everything what happens in three minutes in the book map is pressed in a candle of three minute candle. So who is more right? The five minute guy or the three minute guy or the seven minute guy or the nine minute guy or the 12 minute guy? Who is more worthwhile? Who is right? No one is right. Who cares? You know? So there's only one question. The high, uh, the one, uh, one sentence. The higher the time frame, the more valuable the expression behind it. So what happens during four hours in the book map is indeed more well, more valuable or more worthful than what happens in five minutes. And the closer or the lower you are in time frame, the closer you are at the computer trading. Be careful with time frames. So now you know why I am working with four hourly charts, or maybe one hourly charts. It's really calm trading. So the more data you have during the time, the more valuable and the more worthful is that what you can see in the chart. I hope I could explain it so you can understand it. Okay, so did what I want to say. Forex traders have developed several types of Forex charts to help depict trading data. So you can line, bar, or candlesticks. Um, the best thing, I guess, is candlesticks because you can see what's happened in this time. Maybe you can, you can use um, this kind of line trading. You see, that's line, that's bars, and that's candles. It's uh, developed by the Japanese you guys hundreds of years ago. And they're really smart guys, I think. Human being thinking, pictures. So you see, that's the easy point in trading. So, okay, that's, yeah, okay. Um, the, the candlestick shows you your four prices in a candlestick. The open, the low, the close, and uh, uh, open, high, low, close. Open, high, low, and close. That's OHLC, of course, yes, of this given period. I think this is really clear. You can see the open, the high, the open, the high, and the close, and the low. This is what you can see. And we talk about um, this, uh, the red or the green, you can see here, that's the so-called body. And the high or the low, is called by the wicks or the shadows. So if you have a higher opening and a lower close, you have a falling price. Then you get a red candle or black, whatever you choose, what kind of, uh, what kind of um, color you use. And if you have a lower open and a higher close, then you have um, um, a green candle. So what does it mean if you think in book map? Okay, if you have a red candle, it doesn't mean that the next candle must be red as well. But you can see and you can imagine what happens is that on the seller side was more volume than on the higher side. Otherwise we get a green candle. This is how you can read it. Is there a special reason? in the book web, is there a name in it? No, just can see only buyers and sellers in the volume. That's all. No reason for, for being um, uh, emotionally for trading, of course. So fundamental, technical, quantitative. There are a number of methods and by uh, used by Forex traders to predict the movements of currency pairs. Some traders focus on use. 
interest rates, economic variables, while others prefer to use charting tools and indicators to guide their trading decisions. However, no, no matter your trading method, you will need to know how to read the Forex charts. There is no escaping it, of course not. What I said in the beginning, you must crawl before you can walk. That's the, uh, that's the real point. And Forex charting is no different. You first need to have a good understanding of the basics before you can progress to advanced stuff. Let me show you this because this is the point. Some traders focus on news, interest rates, and economic, economic variables. Let you please look again. Can you see in the chart any news? Can you see any interest rates in the chart? Type it in the chat box, please. Yes or no? Can you see interest rates of or news or fundamentals in this chart? Yes or no? Type it in. Can you see it? Yes or no? If you say yes, show me where you can see. Can you show me where is your fundamental data here in it? Philip, show me. Yes, we see the candles, of course. Yes, you're right. The big candles are probably news. Unfortunately, no, of course not. Yes, we see trends, but they're asking for fundamentals and news. Don't mix it with what you see there. Can you, can you realize what I'm talking about? Why you need education? Yes, I made 278 pips profit, of course, because normally I know what I have to do, of course. Yes, we don't see the news. And you know why, why you cannot see the news? Everything starts and ends in the book map. Show me in the book map news. Can you see news? Say yes or no. Can you see in the book map news fundamentals or something else? Can you see their news? Yes or no? Type it in, just yes or no. Can you see in the book map where everything starts and ends and in use? Right. No, you cannot see. It's that that's what people think. They made that decision by news, but you cannot see it in the chart. So most of the people are focused on the wrong, wrong things in trading. This is, this is a deeper, deeper knowledge about trading. Oh my God, I'm too late. You see, I could talk, but this is coaching. It's kind of coaching, you know, <laughs> but I hope you understand it. So this is a short conclusion, of course. You can read it by yourself. Forex is a business. Um, yes, many times they have opposite direction, of course. Yes, why? It's about the expectations, not about the news. It's about the expectations, okay? So we had four words, you know, buying, selling, a business, and the price. Four really important words. Therefore, I can tell you, you have to be, you have to learn crawl before you can walk. That's all, guys. Let me invite you to our lovely trading spotlight community. You look this one. Here we go. That's our trading spotlight community. You can see we have 210 participants in uh, All right. And we have our conversation there. You can see we, uh, Jens is uh, sharing his uh, breakout uh, trades there. Paul is sharing his trades, me as well. So I invite you, the only requirement is open a real account at Admiral Markets, and then we can share our ideas there. We will never leave you behind after this webinar. Come in, and then we can share it. And uh, my host, um, put your chat, uh, the link into the chat box. Okay, guys, next Friday, Jens is talking about seasonal commodity patterns, Friday, the 4th of December. And you can see, I want to invite you, please attend this webinar as well. And uh, all the other stuff you can ask us, mail, YouTube or Facebook. This video, I guess you can see on Friday. And um, yeah, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your life and to share with me. I did a lot of effort to share my knowledge with you. 
And the last advice is, again, take a private teacher. Then you have a real, real chance to become successful in trading. But you must invest in your education. It's not priceless, of course not. But at the end, it's cheaper than to figure out how you can make money in the market. So thank you for a lifetime. Be careful about your thoughts, guys, because you know they're the beginning of your actions. See you. Bye-bye.